And now for our weekly news segment. All right, let me share my screen again. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it okay from uh, your side. Somebody say vamos, uh, vamos mele. mele. Yeah, we, we haven't even breached that. Topic. Yeah, when's when's that happening? Because they're supposed to be uh, like um, finals in November, right? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yes, yes. Tomorrow. In the election. No, no, on Sunday. Uh, yes. On Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Yes. All right. Um, Domingo. Yeah, I guess that's, that's the first news topic. What do you guys have to say on the election? What's your predictions? Um, uh, first of all, I want to say that I am, I am not a vamos el, mire guy, but I respect español. Que preguntó qué está, qué, qué pensamos que va a pasar en estas elecciones. Eh, yo creo, yo tengo un pensamiento que esta elección está muy dividida, es muy dividida. Termina 51 a 49, eh, la, la sociedad está por elegir eh, dos caminos. Eh, yo no quiero dar mucho mi opinión porque no sé qué va a pasar, eh, pero si me voy a, pase lo que pase, me voy a sorprender. Um, he thinks that eh, this is a very polarizing time and that we're going to see something like a 49-51 situation. Wow. Nosotros, pase lo que pase, vamos a seguir trabajando y llevando Monero. And whatever happens, we're going to keep uh, helping and working with Monero. Uh, but whichever is the output, uh, I'm sure we will be entertained. All right. Drink <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess moving on. Yeah, I don't know what else to say on that topic. I mean, my anecdotal being in, you know, Argentina for the last week, just talking to random people in Buenos Aires and whatnot. Unfortunately for me, because I, I, I like Mile. I mean, I don't I don't live here. Right. Uh, but from what I see from the potential impact he might have just his I think I think you need an ex, a, some some extremism right now in this country to take care of some some of the problems here with the state. It seems like the state freedom, is freedom a- freedom extremism. Yeah, they obviously ha- have a big issue here with their fiat, and he seems like the type of man who would who would take the uh, you know make the make the proper moves to to do that. I don't know if the end result will be better or worse, yeah. um, but I feel like he has he has the guts and the fortitude to take some extreme measures like you spoke about essentially getting rid of the peso and moving to the dollar. I'm not sure what you guys think about yeah, that here, I, but I the this... peso itself, just something needs to be done there. I don't hear the other guy mentioning that at all. He's talking about actually implementing a CBDC, but my point is in talking with people though and talking with locals, it doesn't feel like Mile is going to have a chance at winning. I mean, I've just randomly talked to, to different people, but people that I would even think might be would I would assume would be willing to to go for him aren't. I don't know. I don't know what happened okay. here, but they seem they seem to be a little, yeah. a little scared. First of, of all, um, we I have this uh, this historical requirement that whenever I see an American promoting a right wing <laughs> candidate in South America, I have to suspect CIA involvement. Okay. Uh, other than that, um, I, oh, you mean like because he was promoted to like people like me? Like, uh, no, because the uh, like the the, um, the intelligence community in the US has has conspired historically to have. Um, to have local governments uh, push extractivist, extractivistic, and um, like not not at all nationalistic uh, uh, policies that like policies that actually undermine the country's sovereignty. Um, that that was a reality in the seventies and in the eighties, um, which was like the darkest time in our history. But um, yeah, regarding the current, like the current situation and the current political climate, I would very much like uh, to vote for someone who wants to um, take measures for in forward of uh, preserving cash, which Mele has proposed uh, for, 
and uh, to actually uh, take some drastic measures to get rid of the inflationary currency. I don't think going through the, to the dollar is, a, is the best idea because while still we are a, a, a somewhat dollarized society, the minute you have you get rid of the peso, then the power to bail out banks is not in the Argentine government itself. It's something that the American government would have to do, mm-hmm. and they are not ever going to do that if they if it doesn't help them. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, perhaps a reform on the constitution to actually uh, limit greatly the capabilities of the um, of the central bank would be in order. But even if even if Millet proposed all of that, I am not. I am not willing to vote for a um, like for a political um, a party that has a, such a weak, uh, like that is so okay with the last with this society's last genocide, and that wants to. Like believes that the state terrorism in the 70s and 80s was somewhat of a war of a of a reasonable response to the guerrilla terrorism terrorism. Uh, that's something that we that we actually got rid of for the last 40 years, and I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do my part to bring that back. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the local politics and history well enough to to talk about those things. Um, yeah, Tux. I guess if you want to move on, go ahead with the news. Uh, we could we could talk about this. We could talk about this topic all day, and people here have been. But uh, bottom line is, we'll know by end of Sunday, Monday, what the result is. Yeah, and it's gonna be a mess. It's it's gonna yeah, be that's a mess. gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, hoping hoping things go well for you guys. Come late. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, going to be a stressful day yes so first article we have here um is just some research uh and i mean just statements really talking about how a lot of coins and tokens they have a price but they don't really have much of a value uh and showing how monero's price really comes from its value whereas a lot of other coins a lot of other tokens their price just comes from speculation so monero inherently has more value because it gets that value from its use and people who have Monero tend to actually use it versus Bitcoin, where people are usually just holding Bitcoin. I mean, you can't even really use Bitcoin on chain right now because of the fees, right? Even for like an American, it's the fees are insane. But I'm sure for anyone else who's in like a second or third world country, it's like it's completely inaccessible. And of course, people try to talk about things like lightning, but it's it's still not it's not the same. It's not as good. So uh, that there's some interesting stuff being talked about here. Next, we have a post on Reddit from Vic talking about how Monero.com wallet installs have been increasing, actually. Monero.com wallet went up 30%, whereas Cake Wallet went up 10%. And overall, they have never had a down month since the launch in 2018, which is really impressive. So Cake Wallet has just been continuing to grow in terms of downloads every single month and usage. And uh, furthermore, Monero accounts for over 80% of the network bandwidth we host for our servers. And I can attest to this personally, since I've seen a lot of the VPSs behind the scenes, that Monero nodes use a ton of bandwidth. Uh, Cake Wallet runs some of the largest Monero nodes, and we have we have a dedicated uh, node balancer to handle uh, where people's connections should go, since we have so many different nodes running behind the scenes for different regions. But uh, Monero is by far the largest use for Cake Wallet and Monero. Of course, Monero.com Wallet. Right. And next, we have a list from this person, Monero Master, a interesting Monero reading list that's got a bunch of books that Monero people would probably be interested in, talking about anti-tech revolution, uh, you know, technocracy, cypherpunk, surveillance stuff. A lot of interesting books. And then next, I think you sent this one, Doug. This one's pretty interesting. Uh, Monero on the page of Economic Times in India. There yeah, is, is that... yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, is that real? I just saw, I just saw it being tweeted. I don't know how accurate. Is that like a real thing? 
He says he thinks so. All right. <laughs> I guess we don't really know um, if it is real. It could be. It could potentially be fake, but it does it look like interesting. Somebody paid for an ad, I guess, right on the cover, essentially on the cover or the back cover. Yeah, like on the other side, uh, like you flip it open and this is on the back. So that is that is pretty interesting. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's real, to be honest, because that's a really good way to be able to donate to someone who wrote like a good article on a newspaper, especially in like a more oppressive country. Yeah, that's am- this was in India, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Economic Times of India newspaper magazine. Vic, was that you, Vic? Don't tell us if it was you. We we we, 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 we somebody else. Um, I mean, India is it's certainly ripe, right? Like we talk about, we've talked about that on the show. We mentioned that once or twice. That's a place that needs that we need to focus on with growing Monero as well. But if this is real, very exciting news. Really awesome. You're seeing, you're seeing it. There is a somebody paid. I'm just explaining to the guys here. Somebody paid to put a Monero ad, basically uh, getmonero.com, an advertisement for Monero, on I assume one of the leading newspapers in India on the front oh really front right i assume that's a yeah. i don't know is that that's what a... is, um it, it shows up like really really small and i was what does it say like in handwriting oh it says oh this it says xmr only but this says oh. monero transactions respect your privacy can you say that about the indian rupee or u.s dollar Okay. Um... And it's telling people to go to monero and then it has a qr code where they can donate monero to support the ad itself okay yeah that's... <laughs> which might just be a fake thing and somebody's putting it up there to try to get monero donations so i don't know it could be so i i don't know if i would necessarily donate to this <clears throat> excuse me because it very well like duck said it could just be someone like doing some stupid thing to try and get free yeah, donations yeah. which would be pretty scummy yeah, but yeah, if it is cool. real it's really cool to see if it's real, somebody's out there knows it's real. Do you know? Post a video of you holding the paper up, reading it, showing it to us. Make yeah, let's let's it's let's figure problem. out if this is real. I'm yeah. sure if this is real, we'll probably see another one of these in another newspaper at some point. Yeah, yeah, or somebody should be able to confirm it locally. But right. uh, next, uh, I think this one also from you, Doug. Coin Center has published a new report that ought to turn some heads. It's time to have the conversation. Is the Bank Secrecy Act unconstitutional? Beyond the speech and privacy issues, the BSA is a sweeping delegation of lawmaking power. And there's a related blog post. It's talking about the Bank Secrecy Act um, for the U.S. And I don't, I don't know too much about it. I, I just yeah, I, like... I, I haven't read the report, but you know, we've in shows past on Monero talk and whatever we've spoken about the bank secrecy act. It's, it's essentially what, what mandates or uh, governments, what mandates, what mandates exchanges to do proper KYC AML, what mandates banks to do that. Uh, and it's, it's really a clear violation of the, of the fourth amendment, right? It gives, essentially it says when you hold your money in an institution, like a bank, it's not really your money. And the bank uh, has to report has to report uh, on demand whatever the government is asking for in terms of a report. They want to know what you're doing with your money, right? And it's the Bank Secrecy Act that essentially allow allows uh, allows the government to force these institutions to report this information. And the question is, is the Bank Secrecy Act even constitutional? Like, right, should, should K, is K mandating KYC, know your customer, anti-money laundering rules, are they, are they actually, uh, are, are they constitutional? Um, because what they're effectively doing is they're requiring banks to report information on what money people have and how people use that money. And they legally get around it by basically saying, when you keep your money at these institutions, it's not really yours. And so they're not they're not violating the Fourth Amendment because of that. And it's it's this whole workaround thing. It's how the Bank Secrecy Act exists. And I guess um, they're shining a light on it here, Coin Center, and is running it up the flagpole and questioning its constitutionality. That's great. That is interesting to see that. Um... Someone like Coin Center is uh, bringing us to the forefront. Yeah, they've, they've mentioned it before. I haven't taken a good look at what exactly this report is, but I assume that's that's what they're getting into. 
And next, of course, there were there. Body and I uh, mentioned this earlier, but there were a bunch of rumors going around on Twitter about ah oh, ETF ETF, and that was making all the uh, the maxis go wild, and you know potentially driving some price movement. And then earlier this week, BlackRock spokesperson came out and was like, "No, we have not filed a spot XRP ETF," and you know XRP people, of course, are. Are sad. Uh, there may be a Bitcoin ETF at some point, but uh, XRP, nope. That was that was basically shut down. And the last one, there was a there was a few um, typical CBDC various new stuff, which I'll just skip for now since we don't have as much time. But uh, there's a funding request for MoneroCon for next year. Uh, if you want to help donate for the next MoneroCon, then you can do it on their website. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up because they had reached out to us. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, actually, because we would have forgotten to do, do it otherwise. Yeah, guys, uh, you know, they're, I guess they're, they're already raising money for the for the next one. Um, it was fantastic. I was there in Prague this year. I'm sure it'll be even bigger and better next year. So definitely support support MoneroCon. Let's make it happen.